Hey there, welcome to the latest episode of the Sexy Thyroid Solution. I'm your host, Angela Brown. So today I wanna to talk all about fatigue with hypothyroidism. But if you could do me a really big favor if you're watching this on YouTube, if you could subscribe to my channel and then hit the bell so you get a notification every Thursday when I release a new video. And then if you're watching this on my other socials channels, um, share this and like this, um, maybe tag someone who could benefit from this. So let's go ahead and dive in here. I love talking about this topic because one of the biggest things that I see that when women come to me, especially that are struggling with hypothyroidism, is fatigue. It's super, super common. Um, now, obviously, th fatigue can happen from a lot of things, but one of the hallmark things I do see um, with women that um, struggle with hypothyroidism is fatigue. Side note as well, you do not need to have hypothyroidism to have fatigue. Um, it's just one of those symptoms that's super common with it. I do have women that come to me that are not diagnosed with hypothyroidism and they still work with me in my one-on-one -on -one program um, in my thyroid program because we're doing all the things to support the thyroid, um, even if that blood panel does look normal because I see this happen quite often. Um, so one thing to consider is fatigue, uh, like I said, it's super common when it comes to hypothyroidism. That's not um, uncommon to see that. But what you need to do um, is a different ball game. So just doing the blood panel sometimes isn't enough. And that's what I was saying a little bit ago is that you can actually um, have a somewhat normal um, thyroid panel and still have this extreme fatigue going on. Um, and the thyroid does have a connection there still. That's why I'd go way in more in depth with testing inside my program. That's the reason why, because a blood panel can look fairly normal. Um, the other thing to consider is what blood panel are they doing? If they're not doing a full thyroid panel, they're not doing you a service at all. You actually need to have a full thyroid panel to get a better picture. Um, that will also help connect to, okay, this is actually why you're really fatigued. Your TSH could look somewhat okay. I've seen it happen a lot, but their T3 and T4 are really terrible and they have thyroid antibodies. Well, a lot of times doctors don't check that. They're only checking your TSH. That's not a full thyroid panel. So make sure you're getting TSH, free T3, free T4, reverse T3, um, and then your thyroid antibodies, TPO and TGAB. Those are your most common ones. Um, that's a full thyroid panel. That will be able to give you a better idea as, okay, this is actually why I do have some fatigue going on. The other thing is um, do a little bit more testing than just that. And that's why inside my program, I do hair tissue mineral analysis as well as um, a full hormone panel, simply because I've talked about this before, your thyroid, your adrenals, and your sex hormones, like make a triangle, they all have to interconnect. So when you have this extreme fatigue going on, there could be something going on with your sex hormones. There could be something going on with your adrenals. That's all connected to your thyroid. So you have to do a bigger picture. You have to get a better idea as to what's going on. Um, one of the biggest things that I do see is the adrenals um, usually are getting bogged down. The adrenals um, are getting affected because um, the thyroid is, has become slow or vice versa. They they connect either way. It doesn't even matter whether the thyroid stuff started first, whether the adrenal stuff started first. They both, you, you have to address both either way. So you can't just do one thing and ignore the other because you're not going to be able to get to the bottom of your fatigue or the other symptoms you have going on if you don't address both. That's why inside my program, I do the whole dang picture. You have to look at all of it. Stress is going to be a huge factor for fatigue because it's going to really um, affect your adrenal glands and the adrenals, like I said, are connected to the thyroid. So they're going to uh, have a big interplay there. I've talked about this as well. When you have a lot of stress, it is really hard to have active thyroid hormone, which is your T3. You usually end up reverting it backwards. And that's why on a thyroid panel, I do have people check reverse T3 because what happens is that stress over time will start to shunt the body to stop creating this um, T3. So you have to convert T4 to T3 and it reverts it back. And so the reverse T3 numbers go up. And that's when I can see on a blood panel, like, okay, well, this is probably why you have some extreme fatigue here because you're not even making active thyroid hormone because you're reverting it back. How's your stress levels? And every time I ask, they're like, my stress is horrible right now. Now keep in mind, stress can be from a lot of things. It can be physical, emotional, mental. It could be food that you're eating. That's another thing I want to talk about. If you are eating a ton of bad food, processed foods, stuff like that, that is going to cause a lot of fatigue. Your body has to use a lot of energy to try to get rid of it because it's not good for you. So it ends up bogging down your adrenals, your thyroid, all that. So you have to keep that in mind as well is what you're eating. That can really, really play a role in your fatigue. So 
those are kind of the big ones um, that I like to hone in on when we start talking about fatigue. Um, so make sure you're getting a full thyroid panel. Include all those markers that I mentioned before, which is TSH, free T3, free T4, reverse T3, and your thyroid antibodies. Um, get a little bit more in-depth testing. That's always going to be huge. So you need to look at your sex hormones and what your adrenals are doing. That's going to be a big factor to get the connection as far as um, how, how the fatigue is being um, affected, um, increased, whatever you want to call it, um, based off of um, that triangle that I mentioned, your sex hormones, your adrenal glands, and your thyroid. Um, and then um, your stress levels. You have to hone in on those stress levels because that's going to be a huge factor. And then as well as um, looking at what foods you're eating because the foods can be a big one. And then something else to also keep in mind is those lab reference ranges. I'm not a huge fan of the lab re reference ranges that they give you. Um, they're usually not optimal. Lab reference ranges may say this looks normal. That does not mean optimal. Um, so reference ranges are going to be a really big factor here. If you want more information on that, I actually have a guide, the secret to reading your thyroid blood test. It literally goes over. This is what you need checked. This is why you need checked. And these are the reference ranges that you need to be within to actually feel good and have a, a healthy functioning thyroid. Um, so I'll have that link below. Um, so you can grab that as well because that again it's going to give you a lot of information i actually have people that have printed it off and they take it with them to the doctor like i want these checked and this is why um so i've said it before you've got to be an advocate for yourself i had to do it it took a lot of years to re for me to realize that but you have to be an advocate um and there's a lot of other ways too that you can get your thyroid testing um done as well so if you have questions with that um some more on that just reach out let me know um, but grab my guide because there's a lot of good information on there on what you can do as far as getting a better tests done and um what your reference ranges are that will definitely help hone in on what's going on here why do i have so much fatigue still even though my doctor says my thyroid test looks normal um and then obviously if you're taking medication that's going to play a role as well um what type of medications and i have a bunch of videos um, on that as well i actually did one recently all on thyroid medication um so you can go reference that as well um, i go over all the different medications and um why some may work and might why some might not as well so i will have the link below as well um if you're watching this on youtube that will um link right to that video as well so um if you have more questions let me know um grab that guide like i said and then um i will be in touch soon with you as well um i will see you in the next video bye guys